Hello, this is just one segment in a multi-part series analyzing all of Persona 4 Golden. Don't worry, you aren't missing anything if this is the first part or video that you're seeing, but if you end up enjoying this, I do ask that you please support the channel any way you can, and of course, subscribe to see all the other videos as they come out. As for the basketball link, as well as some of the information revolving around the optional book cutscenes, I ask that you please defer to the Cole video, as I already covered the information there, and I don't want to really retread it here. Daisuke Nagase is one of the two people that you can get when you choose a sports team in Persona 4 Golden. He is the soccer option. The first impression of the soccer team in general is a sort of projected groupthink that since you're from the city, you must look down on them and be full of yourself. They do practice and don't even bother to introduce themselves, but one person on the team is an exception to that rule. One person does. It's Daisuke, who shows compassion to you, telling you to just play and have fun and eventually they'll be over themselves. Cole, who is now established to be a friend of Daisuke's, also comes in after practice with a bit of typical biting sarcasm. And you find out that the soccer team, just like the basketball team, is pretty pathetic in Inaba. Despite that though, Daisuke is the star player, someone who naturally does really well without even needing to apply themselves a ton. But he does apply himself. He enjoys doing it all the same. Daisuke even defends you a bit from Cole's off-handed sarcastic bullying, calling you a transfer student. On a meta level, the game is trying to show you Daisuke's acute ability to read people, despite being a bit of the brawn over brains archetype. Rank 2 shows the soccer team saddling you with all of the work for cleanup, which honestly is kind of odd. And here's the reason why. People's general impression is that Yu Narukami is a huge Chad who everyone loves, and likely that is due to the largely mimetic non-canon anime adaptations hey, let's make out. that intentionally lean in on fan service moments from the games the sister complex Kingpin of Steel. and expound upon them. <laughs> but here in the actual game, you're just some city outsider, and other than Daisuke and by virtue of that Cole, nobody in the soccer team could care an ounce about you. You're not special. And in fact, the idea that you could think that you were special is derided by them. While Daisuke initially just suggests bailing without cleaning since it's not your responsibility anyway, you all end up cleaning together as a way to impress the team suggested by Cole. But this is the first hint, I think, toward Daisuke's character that while he's well-intended and good at reading people, he doesn't like to do things he feels unfairly saddled with, and more has a principle-based, rougher approach to answering dilemmas. Although here the game may be hinting at the aversion to do things that hurt, take time, or are unwanted. In other words, his tendency to run away if they don't seem needed or deserved. Something that becomes a major part of his conflict later in his arc. After practice, you visit the ramen shop where the central conflict is first introduced. Cole mentions this first year girl enamored with Daisuke who is watching him from the crowd, but Daisuke claims that he didn't even notice her and changes the topic saying, enough of that crap. It's strangely aversive, especially for a talented popular athlete like him, why he feels uncomfortable being the object of positive attention by girls. While I can't shake the idea that the meta-narrative reason partially has to do with the fact that Cole and Daisuke fit a lot of the shoujo fujo tropes involving implied homosexual and homoerotic relationships, it's fujoji shipping bait in other words, something that anime does a lot, marking characters with gay undertones and then never confirming or deconfirming the subtexts in the canon. In the case of both Cole and Daisuke, neither of them are gay, or implied to be interested in both as we find out and as is important to both of their links explicitly. Instead, the answer within the regular old narrative is actually a mild guilt and trauma in Daisuke's past, causing him to avoid women after perceived unresolved mistakes. But we'll get into that more as it becomes more relevant in the story. The next link is mainly a repeat, the team picking on you, but Daisuke takes the opportunity to practice more. He's clearly devoted, but then when some girls come up to confront him, likely the same girl mentioned by Cole before, he blows them off somewhat rudely and says, he's busy with practice still. Now we get a clearer message of using dedication toward a hobby to block time that should be used confronting an issue. Daisuke is running from the truth by using otherwise positive activities, which is something you don't actually see covered a lot, where something good is used as escapism rather than something neutral or bad being used for that. 
Rank 4 introduces I Ebihara. This scene is virtually the same as Cole's, and so in the same way that I covered it in Cole's part, I'll keep I to her own segment. This introduction does prompt the soccer team to discuss Ai's looks, though, giving another opportunity to reinforce Daisuke's own disinterest in women. Something new that we become privy to, though, is that the team's reaction is to write off Daisuke's feelings as being caused by his popularity, making him picky and stuck up. This is good information because it helps give us a reason for why Daisuke is not willing to open up with others about his strange feelings, being presented with topics surrounding girls that never truly ask Daisuke why, but rather presuppose his place and feelings in things. Feelings of disappointment and regret. Especially involving women, and at his age, with who he is, is causing him to be closed off and stubborn from the offset. Already, Daisuke is rough around the edges and inarticulate with his feelings, but with the soccer team, we sort of see this reinforcement in Daisuke's mind over the odd nature of his feelings, giving him all the justification he needs to assume that he won't be understood and to push his feelings farther down. In fact, this assumption that he isn't understood or that people won't want to get to know him, and that he just exists to others to fulfill their relationship with stock popular guy, is reinforced on the only weak complaint he actually levies at women. That is, that despite never talking to him or knowing anything about them, that they ask him out on dates repeatedly. So he feels objectified by his male teammates and the women who pursue him, and take that while he doesn't understand his regret, he feels no one else will either, and no one else even wants to know or understand it. Instead, they want Daisuke to play a role, and to do it well. So his toxic escapism is actually being reinforced by the people around him in his life, pushing him to be this popular archetypal role model while he himself is burning deep down. Rank 5 essentially fulfills your own personal arc, finally proving yourself and being accepted by the team as an apt athlete. Both Daisuke and Cole are happy to see it happen, but this services Daisuke's link more in the ranks onward. Starting rank 6, Daisuke seems to have lost a lot of vigor and passion for playing the game. It even spawns a minor argument with Cole and Daisuke about always putting 100% in. I think a shallow view of this, and one that is also sorely missing the point, would be that since you're doing well, he now feels inferior. But I think instead it is a combination of the events of Rank 5 with his own built-up mental arc intersecting. First, your win and skill does in fact take the sole sports champ stigma off of him, at least on the team, lightening their pressure and the load on his shoulders but with their lightened pressure gives way to more time for him to stew over his regrets and wonder why he's doing what he is, unable to push them down successfully, especially with how he has seen himself and Cole band together to get to know you for real and help the real you. He sees on some level now that he does have a tight-knit group who maybe would be there for him if he ever chose to open up, but he's not ready to confront that, or even to know what exactly the that he would be confronting is. You see this willingness to maybe stop using this escape, as when he earns extra laps for one of the girls coming up to him again and talking, asking if it was her fault, he says no. This doesn't seem like the gentleness that he would have afforded a few links earlier when deep in his denialist attitude. The link finally ends with Cole saying that he needs to talk to you, but that it needs to wait until next time around due to family stuff. Now, this seems innocuous enough, but as a bit of a side tangent, it's actually a really smooth, charming bit of consistent writing, as this actually mirrors Cole's apparent business in his own rank 6, which, as the rest of Cole's social link, connects to his family in higher detail. It's also cool to point out here that just like in the rank 6 of Cole's link, where Daisuke actually tells you of plans that he has to help Cole in his rank 6, you see the exact thing mirrored in this link of Daisuke's. So in a way, they both end up plot-wise mirroring each other's pacing in some of their story beats. The difference is that the personalities and problems of the characters are sending them through very different journeys, even if they're along the same path. Rank 7 involved Cole confiding in you about his observation about Daisuke's sudden change in attitude, lacking passion for soccer, and this new sullen attitude toward girls, questioning if they could be related. 
Cole's plan then is to set up a three by three triple blind date. A very Cole idea, and as I mentioned in the other segment, is something his own social link calls back to as a joke. Just another bit of character consistency across arcs, and I appreciate that a bunch with Persona 4 Golden. Here, just like Daisuke does early in Ko's Link, Ko confides in you with the existence of a girlfriend that Daisuke once had. She apparently broke up with him after she claimed that he didn't actually love her, mainly because they never even made a move to hold hands while in the relationship. According to Cole, ever since then, Daisuke has claimed that he doesn't understand what it means to like another person. Link 8 goes about as well as you would think. Daisuke learns what is going on, then flees the situation. He didn't want the date, didn't sign up, didn't ask for it. Back at Inaba, Cole and Daisuke get into it. Cole asserts that Daisuke is scared that a girl will reject him if he opens up for who he is, and that he's scared to play soccer and plateau or fail to improve, something that's much easier to see now that you've joined the team. Daisuke tries to shut Cole and you out by saying that they don't have a say in his life, but when Cole challenges and asks what you and Cole are to Daisuke, Daisuke finally feels comfortable to give in to the trust that he's developed in you both that he was repressing with his fear. He talks about how a girl asks him out, they claim that they don't understand him, and then they leave. As we know, this misunderstanding has to do with his physicality in a relationship. It reinforces the things I talked about earlier of the stereotypes and false self projected onto the object of Daisuke rather than the person he is. They don't expect Daisuke to be complex, or have his own mind about things, to have thoughts and actions that don't align with the lie of his stereotype. It comes out that not only does Daisuke still feel regret over his girlfriend, Cole mentioned before, but that he still actually likes her. He felt he disappointed her, and that of course he liked her, she was the first girlfriend he ever had, and that matters to him. This gives a window into the sensitive and gentle person that Daisuke really is, something foreshadowed in his gentle kindness to come up to you when the rest of the soccer team wouldn't bother. But to think that it really does run this deep is heartwarming for me, really makes me want to see the real him blossom and be accepted by others, not as a stereotype or to fill some objectified role. So he vows to you, his friends, to make it up to her. Daisuke goes to share his feelings and clear things up with his ex, just to find out that she had moved on and was with another guy, one of the seniors on the soccer team. But even so, it was never about getting back together with her, it was about sorting things out for him and getting closure. I think Daisuke really resonates with a specific kind of guy that I think feels alone or uncomfortable in themselves in a sexual scenario. I know for years in high school, girlfriend after girlfriend, I would be uncomfortable and feel weird getting intimate with them. In my head, I liked them, I found them attractive, but there was always a sense of awkwardness, a strange uncomfortability. When girls came on to me, I felt that I needed to escape the situation. I was hit with waves of anxiety. I wondered at one point if I was asexual or demisexual or gay. I wondered what was wrong with me but I felt uncomfortable sharing that when the people around me didn't seem to share this psychological wall that I was having troubles with. After I lost my virginity, I felt extreme anxiety any time a girlfriend would get intimate with me. This is despite me still looking at porn, having fantasies, but when the fantasy reached its moment of realization where it could actually happen, my body would shut down and I would have panic attacks. Now, I know my circumstances are pretty unique and partially due to my trauma, but even prior to that, the uncomfortability I felt and sometimes feel with partners still to this day is nothing wrong, and it took me a long time to understand this. This is part of what Daisuke's arc is all about. The stereotype of the popular athletic guy is a guy who will be physical with the girl he's in a relationship with. The girls that come up to Daisuke expect that from him, and they feel unloved and don't understand his actions when he doesn't do it, judging him and lashing out. Because part of the stereotypes, the objectification in our culture, is that women should be coy and shy and that men should be sexual and aggressive. 
To be a woman and provocative is looked down upon. To be a man and not obsessed with sex or sexually forward is deemed less than a man. And so, this aspect of Daisuke's struggle is dealt with so casually and with such tact that I would say I've literally never seen it ever anywhere before in media. The way that the game links this overall message of accepting the person you are, even when the self that you aren't is projected onto you, as an object by society and those around you, is also a general message that can be taken in a lot of different ways for a lot of people who don't relate to this very specific way that it's relevant to his character. Daisuke learns in his rank 10 to have confidence in his true self. If people don't accept, if people don't understand, that's on them. He's going to give his 110%, no matter what, toward what he cares about, and continue being honest with himself. Eventually, doing this, he'll find people who understand that part of him too. He's already found two who do that, after all. Daisuke Nagase, The Strength, another super solid branch of the split arcana of Persona 4, almost feels like a shame that you are tied to one or the other. But both stories we got are highly different, yet highly unique and compelling stories. Now, for what the name means, Daisuke, Nagase, and how the Strength Arcana applies to them. Daisuke is likely referring to big or great here, and Nagase likely refers to leader, a superior, or a torrent of water. So then Daisuke Nagase follows with the strong leadership, his towering position of strength and diligence, his commanding leadership and compassion, something always sought in a superior. His name fits well with the rough but well-meaning person that he is, who works hard to do his best, especially after his arc, having gained the confidence to believe in his true self and those ambitions for his own cause and end. As mentioned in the other segment, strength is depicted by a woman taming a lion. Not with force, but with coexistence. The lion is the animal instinct or nature within someone, and it has great to offer when wielded properly. The issue with Daisuke was that he was forcing the lion down, not working alongside it. He was controlling with force and therefore suppressing those feelings, rather than letting them breathe healthily. A very different sort of relationship problem than that of Cole, but one that matches the Arcana just the same. In Alchemy, the taming of the Red Lion is equivalent to self-realization. Daisuke suppresses the aspects of himself to fit and fall under the watchful speculation of his peers, but he was able to truly act at his best once he realized and accepted those things in himself. This card sometimes refers to a change in health for someone. For Daisuke, I think it's mental. Daisuke is suffering from mental struggles that plague his ability to work properly on the field, but is able to increase his mental health after resolving pieces of his trauma, becoming a more self-affirmed self. Sometimes lower polarity strength can refer to a poor work ethic, either from a toxic overworking or a lack of drive to get things done. In the case of Daisuke, we actually see both of these at different points in the story. At one point, he does work to give in to others' expectations and to help repress his true feelings. It's striving to a level that is actively toxic toward him. And later in his social link, we see him doing things half-hearted before eventually reaffirming not only working hard and well, but also for the right and healthy reasons. The Strength, Daisuke Nagase. I hope you enjoyed that part. If so, I post tons of Persona 4 Golden content right now, as this is one in a huge series of videos as I mentioned before. If you haven't already and you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, share with anyone you think might enjoy this or take something from it. It's the only way I can hope to grow this channel and properly keep um, paying for my life. And if you would also like to fund this project and future large projects once the Persona 4 Golden series is over, please donate to my Patreon, which comes with a number of behind-the-scenes tier perks, videos, and a monthly Patreon chat. Until that next call, or the next video, see you soon.